get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, thank you guys for tuning in for another episode. And this time I got my girl, Emily, with me. Emily, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. So I am here. It is late night. I have on my bonnet of salvation. <laughs> 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 and we are ready to get into these topics. So one of the things we want to talk about, I've been wanting to talk about this for the past few weeks. Um, and I figured this would be a perfect conversation to have, to have with Emily on. I want to talk about the Kylie Jenner situation. The Kardashian Jenner clan, they have definitely been, you know, Chad, I think they're falling off, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw the new L'Oreal commercial with Kendall. Have you seen that plane? Uh uh. Now, I've seen, I'm trying to think. No, I guess I hadn't seen that ad. I saw, last thing I saw with Kendall was like the Marc Jacobs campaign, campaign, which I think was last year. Oh, no, I honey. Like she is doing a L'Oreal ad. And you know, L'Oreal is regular. You can go to the CVS, Eckert, mm -hmm. and, you know, Walmart. Yeah, they're doing L'Oreal ads. And to me, that's very interesting being that, you know, Kim has KKW, Kylie has, you know, her makeup line. So it just shows that, the regular consumers are no longer really buying their line like that. And it seems like now they're trying to expand and connect with all these random brands that they wouldn't have connected with in the past. Oh, no. Remember, Kendall was like, I'm very selective because uh, she got all that backlash from other models. Like, I'm very selective of, you know, who she models for. Uh, I only do so many shows. I don't do you know, a hundred shows a, a year or whatever the fuck those other like she was such a bitch about that. Remember yeah. when she, the controversy of her, she only does top tier modeling stuff and like was yeah. putting down. Well, other... now she's modeling L'Oreal. Okay? Right. So what it's the fuck not... the other girls do. <laughs> yeah. That's not super top tier. Like, you know, hell, maybe one day I too will get a L'Oreal contract, but a lot of influencers right. get L'Oreal deals. So I'm just like, Kendall, mm -hmm. what, what are you doing here? Yeah. <laughs> Michaela. It was Michaela. Wasn't that the whole mascara thing? The the one from yeah. Boston. Mm hmm. Michaela on TikTok. With yeah, a big Boston is. accent. Uh-huh. The Kardashians. <laughs> Chowda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I one. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and watch this clip of um, well, you know, trying to be relatable and she's crying, you know, about her looks and how people make fun of her. And it's just, you know, it's not fair. So we're going to go ahead and listen to this really quick here. I've just like, I hear nasty things about myself all the time. Kylie Jenner gets candid about how negative comments about her appearance really affect her. On the June 20th episode of The Kardashians, the 26-year-old breaks down to sister Kendall about the criticism she gets over some of her features. How's everything going? It's like a miracle that I still have confidence. And I could still like look in the mirror and think that I'm pretty because I just feel like after Paris, there was like this picture, which for the first time I was like, okay, we're not gonna wear a lot of makeup. So it's like, I'm trying to, it's like, I'm wearing too much makeup. And it's like, you're wearing too much makeup. Then I yeah. go and I don't wear a lot of makeup and someone catches me in like a weird light. You can look at pictures since I'm 13. I just have these lines, but I've had them since I was a yeah. child. I've just like, I hear nasty things about myself all the time. Kylie says after years of headlines about her looks, it's starting to wear on her. I don't think it's this particular headline that makes me feel vulnerable or hits me harder. I think it's just after 10 years of hearing about it, 10 plus years, it's, it just gets exhausting. I'm kind of like so numb to people talking about mm -hmm my looks at this point and i just want to know why on the internet no one says anything or think that it's okay well i think that's a general thing with our family we're dehumanized like they don't yeah. think that 
there's any rules with us. Whereas like if you talked the same way you do about us, about any other woman, people would come to their defense all day long. But for yeah. some reason with us, it's like they don't think we have any feelings. The beauty mogul also gets honest about how she scaled back on the amount of injectables she uses. And she cries when realizing that the hate really does get under her skin. I went on a journey the last year dissolving like half my lip filler. Mm. I hate even having this conversation over and over and over again because it feels like it's a waste of my breath because I think with me it's just never going to change. But it's, it's just been... Why do people think it's okay to talk about me? But Sister Kendall helps put the negativity into perspective for Kylie. And then I see some, I'll see some comments and it's like, or some people be like, this is really mean and defend me. Like, why are we talking about her looks? Yeah. It's 2024. And yeah. then I'll see other comments like, because she did it to herself. She up her face. She has so much surgery. And I'm like, I just, even if I did get so much surgery and I have this and I got all these things, I still don't think it's okay to talk about someone's looks. I agree. People have been talking about my looks since I was 12, 13. Yeah. Before I even got lip filler, people yeah. talk about my looks. Yeah. So it's like, and it's just so hurtful. I look old. I see it under every post. I'm like, not even just saying this. You've never looked younger and you've never looked better. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So y'all just heard that clip and that clip went viral about two and a half weeks ago. So what did you think initially when you first, you know, saw Kylie crying to Kendall of all people about her looks? Yeah, that was the first thing. It's like her and Kendall do not fuck with each other. And that's an ironic that choice because Kendall has always like been one of Kylie's like biggest bullies. She always would make fun of her looks and her big back pores. And she would always be like, oh, yeah, you're getting too much surgery. And Kendall's had surgery, too. So it was very hypocritical. But anyways, um. And the hug seemed really awkward too. Like it didn't, it didn't seem like a, a genuine conversation. Like maybe if that was like her and one of her friends or, you know, but I don't know, whatever with that. Uh, I, I just didn't feel like that was genuine conversation for one. Second of all, um, well, hold on, this damn dog. I'm sorry. Hold on one second. Mm. My bad. She was scratching at the door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyway, um, yeah, it just seemed really disingenuine, the, the conversation, because I don't really think her and Kendall are cool like that. Which is weird because they're so close in age. But anyways, um, I find it, you know, I will say, like, Kylie has, when she was younger, she was always made fun of for the way that she looked. She was deemed the ugly sister. I personally think Kylie's the prettiest out of all of them. But I do think that this is a monster that she's created herself. When they're sitting there talking about people dehumanize us, they act like we're not human. Y'all have went above and beyond to make sure that you are not deemed normal people. You're so above everybody you live this life of luxury and you have created these beauty standards, especially Kylie. I mean, she has profited significantly, made millions of dollars, allegedly, um, you know, off of these beauty standards that she has created. Her entire family has created these unrealistic beauty standards. So I find it very ironic that she is upset and very emotional and crying when people are judging her off of the standards that her and her family have you know, played a huge part of creating. No, I agree 100%. And what I find very interesting is even when she was younger, I don't think she was necessarily ugly. I think that she was just average. And yeah. I think we live in a world now where you can't even be average. She was, you know, she wasn't ugly, but she wasn't pretty. Everybody's not going to be drop dead gorgeous. And, and you know, like, it's okay to just be average. Some people are just average looking. And mm -hmm. she was average looking and she felt the need to spruce that up because of whatever insecurities or people making fun of her. And she's gotten a lot of work done. And I remember for a while, I didn't know that Kendall had gotten work done. You kind of broke that down to me because I thought Kendall was like the so-called natural one. But she's changed her face significantly over the years. All of this mm -hmm. has happened. You know, so it's like, unfortunately, when you're still growing, my issue with Kylie has just been she hasn't been honest. You know, if you want to get stuff done, that is your business. She has the means. She's a celebrity. She wants to look a certain way. But when you're telling girls that I got these full lips just from, you know, overlining my lips, when you're seeing girls do the 
Kylie Jenner lip challenge and they're sucking on glass to get fuller lips. And you know, deep down inside that you got fillers. Like why not just be honest about that? <laughs> it's the latest phenomenon sweeping social media. Teens using shot glasses and bottles as suction devices for <gasps> do-it-yourself lip enhancement. <laughs> I can't even close my mouth. <laughs> What's causing this craziness? Kylie up top. They're trying to look like reality star Kylie Jenner, the 17-year-old half-sister of the Kardashians. You know, obviously you didn't go from these damn paper cut lips to full <laughs> black girl lips, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Um, just from overlining your lips, like nobody's dumb. But for so many years she's swarping down, it was just lip liner and certain lip gloss, you know, lipsticks. And then she used that to spin into her Kylie Jenner lip kit, which made her millions of dollars. You know, people loved it at that time. Then, you know, around the time of 19, all of a sudden her chest got bigger. Was she swerping down? I'm just aging. I gained weight. But now while she's talking to Kendall, she's admitting that she's gotten breast augmentation. You know, and you can clearly see she's gotten her waist done, BBL. She got the whole package, right? The fillers, the injections, all that stuff. And unfortunately, when she started doing that to herself, she did look older. A lot of these folks in Gen Z, they literally look as old as millennials. Some of y'all look as old as Gen X. Let me just keep that up. <laughs> Damn. Okay. And yeah, and that's without having work done. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's the whole thing like, on TikTok. Yeah, because you're technically not supposed to be getting fillers and stuff in your face until you're like in your late 30s, early 40s, because your face is still growing, it's maturing, you know, and so when you're tightening stuff up, it, it makes you look like an older woman trying to tighten up her skin. You know, you're getting skin tightening that you don't need at 19, 20 years old. And now you see the fillers are migrating, you see certain pictures where her face looks like it's kind of droopy. I mean, it's it's really sad, but at the end of the day... I also find it funny that for years, they didn't care what people thought about them. You know, we don't mm -hmm. care. We're rich. We're on TV. It's jealousy. It's hating. But now all of a sudden that the money's not rolling in like it once was, the money's not money the checks are not checking. Um, now all of a sudden you want to have a relatable conversation because that's what they're trying to do. Her and Kendall are trying to be relatable. And at this point, the average person cannot relate. Yeah, especially in this economy right now, inflation um, you know, groceries are crazy expensive. Rent is ridiculously expensive. Like there's so much going on where people really are like out here struggling. Nobody really cares to see them living this, you know, super luxurious life. I think that that's just kind of not a, in, in anyone's interest right now. And, you know, they're a whole empire. They know what's going on. They're watching the videos on TikTok. They're watching the videos on YouTube. They're watching people talk about how they've fallen off. And a lot of people are saying it's because people don't want to see you know, y'all super rich, luxurious life anymore. You're just not relatable. So now they're trying to be more relatable. Right. And I definitely, I, I do agree too with what you said about her being dishonest about her plastic surgery. That's another thing. Because I get if you don't want to volunteer information because you don't want to be ridiculed, that's fine. But you don't have to lie about it. If someone is constant, if you don't want to, be they know what questions to ask them. If if they go, especially like the interview where they initially asked her, I think it was like an interview with E. If her mm -hmm. lips was something she did not want to discuss, they would have told her before that interview, don't ask me about my damn lips. So for her to lie about it, it's one thing if you don't want to address it, if you don't want to talk about it, if you just want to ignore it, but to just flat out lie and say, nope, I don't have fillers in my lip. I use like seven different colors like girl come on now we wasn't born yesterday I don't care what type of lip liner you use you're not going to go from like you said lips having like that to that but a lot of younger people saw that and they believed it and they're like yeah. oh okay well I too have thin lips and I too would like to look like Kylie Jenner so you know yeah, I mean it, think it, about it for years she spent millions in marketing to impressionable young girls you mm -hmm. know some of them dream that if they buy her lip kit their lips can look like that and then they buy the lip kit for 30 bucks and their lips don't look like that. Well, now the next step is filler. So she preyed upon a lot of people's insecurities, you know, and so she benefited from it monetarily. And now you want to come back and play victim. And I'm not saying because she's a celebrity, she can't be hurt and she can't have hurt feelings, you know, but what I am saying is that you're not the exception. 
Like black mm -hmm. women get trolled all the time online every day, just literally for existing. You know what I'm saying? People who put themselves on social media, black, white, or otherwise, get trolled online simply for existing. You know what I'm saying? If people don't like you, if they don't like the commentary that you give, like we get picked apart. I get picked apart all the time. So it's just like, welcome to the real world. Yeah, so when they say that if, so when they say things like, oh, if this was any other woman, people would come to their rescue, but because we're so dehumanized, no. No, and no, all types of celebrities get trolled. You know what I'm saying? Lizzo, how many times has she been trolled for her weight and clout and everything else? Mm -hmm. I don't see the Kardashians running with the cape to protect her. You know, we take our, our bruises on the chin, we take our trolling on the chin and we keep it pushing, you know? So it's like, you're not going through anything that nobody else has gone through. And that's what I just didn't like this whole victim, poor, you know, this victim mentality, poor me, poor me, you know, um, somehow we should be saved from any type of criticism or trolling. Welcome to the real world. You cannot have it, you, you know, both ways where you're able to benefit from the public when it comes to them praising you and giving you, you know, nothing but kudos and credit and, you know, jocking your style. But then you don't want the backlash. You don't want the people who may not be fans of yours. Well, that's part of putting yourself out there. You're going to have people who love you and you're going to have people who cannot stand you. And it is what it is. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.